as it is said, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and since it alone justifies, it is evident that by no outward work or labor can the inward man be at all justified, made free, and saved, and that no works whatever have any relation to him. Now this destroys the church of Christ. <laughs> right there. The whole doctrine, yeah. everything they rest on, because you have to be baptized in order to have salvation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this destroys any church that preaches baptism after being salvation. Or any work. Yeah. Because if because they're trying to make that like he I'm said water baptism yeah water baptism he's yeah. trying to make that what he said up above along with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly so Martin Luther just destroyed all of that yeah and the communion and everything else but anyway uh, and and that no works whatever have any relation to the inward man right and so on the other hand it is solely by impiety and incredulity of heart that he becomes guilty and a slave of sin, deserving condemnation, not by any outward sin or work. See, deserving the condemnation that the Lord has passed upon the whole world unless they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Exactly. On what he did, exactly. Yeah. On the path, on the way out. And that's what he's saying here. And on the other hand, it's solely by impiety and incredulity of heart. Yes. It's your heart yeah. that leads you to righteousness or to death. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what we were trying to say. You cannot get out of that fog on your own because you're totally and utterly confused. Yeah. And you Paul see? says in Romans 6, 7, Oh, uh, what's the word, Dad? Oh, I just had it now in my mind. Okay, well, you'll get it in a minute. Yeah. Therefore... <laughs> the first care. Wretched man that I am, who shall yes. deliver me from this body of death? Right. See, that's so significant to what we've been talking about. This what? The body of death. Yes, the body of death. <laughs> this now, person that I am. Death. Therefore, understanding these things, the first care of every Christian, every true Christian, ought to be what? Lay aside all reliance on, on works. works and strengthen his faith in Jesus now, alone. Now remember that because as it's we get good. on here in, in Martin Luther's document later on and it'll be in another set of videos on this document but well, as we get on here uh, we come to this point where he talks about how do you exercise your faith later on in this document and the point he tries to make later on in this document is exactly coming back to this how you exercise your faith is that your flesh constantly wants to try to do these works, to try to show justification. It, it desires, your flesh desires to have to do something to show other men that you're, that you're saved. Yeah. You see? But God doesn't need it. It's that no. your testimony. Because none of those it. things, none of those things affect, like you said earlier, the inward man. Yeah. And any hypocrite can do any of those things. Right. But yet your flesh desires to do those things because why? Because when people see you do those things, what do they what do they give you? They pat you on the they back. They pat you on the back and give you praise and I you get believe. reward. You see, but then once you start doing that, see that's the subtlety of the devil, because that leads you right away from what? Faith. And that's what, what Christian faith is. And John said one of the those are one of the three categories of all man's sin is pride of life. Yeah. What do we want that for? We want oh we want somebody to pat us on the back yeah. and make us feel better. Pride, but the see. truth is, therefore, the first care. So in order to exercise your faith, and we'll get to it on another Sunday or something. Okay. Well right. to exercise your faith. Every Christian ought to lay aside all reliance on works. works. And, and strengthen faith. his faith alone. And strengthen his faith but, alone. Uh, now, look how, how the church does today. Now, uh, if you're a family, you know, so they indoctrinate you, little children, right on up with all these works and things yeah. to make them belong, supposedly, the church. Right. But it's death. You see, and then they can't never get away from it, exactly. seemingly. Right. And, but if and then they're they not... Become, and, then, and then after doing all of those works, they become atheists later on in college because they're educated yes. that God doesn't really exist and, and those works didn't mean anything anyway. So then they turn around <laughs> yeah. and they say, well, the church failed them. Exactly. See, they have an out. Right. And, and this is what uh, is it's so destroyed. passive. Yeah. Made the church so passive today. Weak. They get weak. They can't let go of it. See, yeah, uh, it's they, the works. It's a bondage. Their oh, works yeah. are destroying them. Religious bondage. Yeah, exactly. That's well, let's start. That's that's actually a longer sentence. So, 
Martin Luther says, Therefore the first care of every Christian ought to be to lay aside all reliance on works and strengthen his faith alone more and more, and by it grow in the knowledge, not of works, but of Christ Jesus, who has suffered and risen again for him as Peter teaches. Oh, as Peter teaches when he makes no other work to be a Christian one. So the only Christian work that you have is to exercise your faith. And the exercise of your faith is to lay aside all those fleshly works and to resist those, the desire of the flesh to do those works. And then to focus on Christ alone, your faith. Well, he gets right down to that too in the next few sentences. Thus... Christ, when the Jews asked him what they should do that they might work the works of God, mm -hmm. rejected the multitude of works with which he saw that they were puffed up, mm -hmm. and commanded them one, one thing, thing only, saying, yes. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent, <laughs> for him hath God the Father sealed. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? In John God 6, 27, 29. How, how, how Martin Luther... <clears throat> read that though he says thus Christ rejected the multitude of works when he saw that they were all puffed up by their works exactly and commanded them one thing only mm -hmm. saying this is the work of God that you believe on him which is me Jesus yeah whom he hath sent God the Father sent me for I Jesus hath God the Father sealed alone Alone. Isn't that Nobody awesome? else. Not Muhammad. Not no. Buddha. No. Not anybody else. Not Moses. No Moses. Right. Nobody. nobody. Abraham. 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 No. Just Jesus That's is the Jesus. only way right. into the heavens. Amen. And back into the original creation. Okay. Woo. Hence, a right faith in Christ yeah. is an incomparable. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> incomparable. Treasure. Treasure. <laughs> carrying with it. Universal salvation and preserving from all evil. That is so beautiful. As it is said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be yeah, saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Mm -hmm. So so you know, you you as a parent, you know, you as a husband for your wife, your family and everything, what do you try to do? You try to protect them and keep them from all harm. Mm -hmm. Right. But what have you done as a husband? If you haven't protected them from all evil. Amen. And haven't shown them the way. That's right. Yes. There's only one way to protect them from that evil. And that is to give them your testimony of Jesus Christ in your life. So that they can have that light that will dis espew, dispew, uh, eschew. That's what I was right. <laughs> that will eschew all evil. There you go. You see, that is the purpose of a husband. That is his sole purpose in life. Mm -hmm. That's it. And to give it to his kids. Or a mother and to or give dad. Say. A mother too. But I mean especially the husband because he's the ruler of the household. Well that's what he should do. Exactly. Praise yeah. The Lord. And, Praise the Lord. And there's no more honorable husband. And the same thing with the wife. What Amen. is the purpose of the wife? That's right. To give to the children this light. That's you see? exactly right. To bring right. them up in this faith. Because that's what's going to give them strength. That's what's going to give them purity of mind. That's what's going to give them righteousness. Well, what's it, get right back down to it. What is the purpose of a disciple of Jesus that's Christ? That's exactly right. That's what the he said of the to word. his disciples. That's what Martin Luther said. Take the gospel. Take this truth about me. Into all nations. Into all nations. And that doesn't mean bring up a big old pot for everybody who's broke in the church to bring and put money in no. so you can go into a far off country. Mm -hmm. It means just in your Where life. You're at. Exactly. In your social dealings with men uh -huh. every day of your life, with your family. That's the mission field. That's why Jesus but said thank God he that's didn't why say Jesus that was I'm true. not saying that, but that's right. why Jesus it would spread on its own that way. Yeah. You it was spread across borders and everything like it did during the apostles' yeah. times. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, look at the field. It's ripe for harvest. Mm, I tell you, this is It's powerful. ripe for harvest, powerful, but the yeah. gatherers are few. Why were the gatherers few? Well, because they're all trying to raise money to go off into big ships and planes over to other countries and everything. You see, they've got the wrong ideas about everything. When if they were just to have it solid in their own family and in their own dealings every day with their men around them, then it would just spread. All over. Yeah. You see the whole world. Mm -hmm. Day, person to person, like word of mouth. The greatest advertising campaign on the face of the planet. 
Anyway, sorry. Isaiah, looking to this treasure, this incomparable treasure, which is a right faith in Christ, looking to this treasure predicted, the consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Mm -hmm. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, yeah. even determined Wait. in Wait. the midst of the land. Okay. How As if he said, faith, which is the brief and complete fulfilling of the law, will fill those who believe with such righteousness that they will need nothing else for justification. Thus too, Paul says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Yes. I want to back up, if I may, just a minute, <coughs> because this is a very misunderstood word, word right here. He that believeth in Mark chapter, what is that, 15 or... Uh, 16 and 16, Mark 16, 16, Jesus says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be. And you know, everybody looks at that as if it's a future thing, but that word be right there, there's many, many uh, 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 explanations for the word be, but that word be right there means remain. He that believeth not shall remain damned. Yeah. See, that's not a shall be one day. Yeah. It's a shall remain damned. Because we're all born into shall death. Exist see, as damned. As damned. That's see? Right, and death is moment. damned. See, right. and if you're a death creature and you haven't come into that eternal life of, that only Jesus can give you, and you haven't sought for that, then you're going to remain damned. That see, is the judgment. Be, you're right. Because why? Judge, it was judged all the way from the beginning. Yeah. Because man is, what? Consumed by this knowledge of good and evil. Go because ahead. of how we explain, death cannot give death life. Right. See, death can only give death. Okay, so how, why is it that they remain damned? Because they haven't come to life where they can have life. See, so, mm. so that's what it's talking about. He that believeth not shall remain damned. Yeah. See, because the judgment was from the foundation of the world. Okay, let's finish up here. Okay. That's good. Let's conclude. That's good. I just wanted to bring that in there. I hope that was good. Yeah. But you ask, how can it be the fact that faith alone justifies and affords without works so great a treasure of good things when so many works, ceremonies, and laws are prescribed to us in the scriptures? Mm -hmm. That's what they justify all their works with. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus did it. Jesus yeah. took well, communion. Well, it's back here. And Jesus took communion. Jesus yeah. baptized. Jesus did this. Jesus yeah. did that. So we should do it too. Yeah. They made it all into works, you see. Mm -hmm. Jesus was doing it by word of mouth from his Father exactly. to show the Father. Exactly. And to show life and to, to relieve them from works. Is why he did all those things to show that they didn't have to do works. And what did the church go around and do? They made it all works again. And they made it all works. They made them all serve to works Brought again. death right on down. That's <laughs> Satan and his works. It, it is. See, death will only produce death. So he can't he meant produce by, life. Uh, hearing the word of God, he didn't mean this scripture, which is, uh, which is the word of God. Yeah. Right? But he saying. meant uh, living. Right. Yes. That's every word. Yeah. So it's because your testimony. Shows God exists. Exactly. And if you only have a testimony of words on a page that your knowledge of good and evil doesn't really understand anyway, and then you're trying to spout that off uh, as a secondary or third source to mm -hmm. somebody else, well, then they're not going to understand anything and get any life mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. You see? Because that's not the word. That's what. That's not the word of God. So, uh, I answer these people. Before all things, bear in mind what I have said: that faith alone. Without works justifies, sets free, and saves, as I shall show more clearly below. Meanwhile, it is to be noted that the whole scripture of God is divided into two parts, precepts and promises. And after this, we'll, we'll conclude, after we get through this, precepts and promises. Uh, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, stop get, yeah. we'll get into that next time. Yeah, okay. let's do it. So we'll talk about precepts and promises next okay. time. Okay. And that's where... Uh, Martin Luther is going to get this foundation of faith alone without works justified.